I saw this math problem, I thought it'd be fun, so here we go. Let's read the problem. And this is from like a cal Calculus 1 course, um, in case you can't tell, that's where it's from. So it says a grinding wheel has a radius of 20 centimeters and a thickness of 10 centimeters, so it's a cylinder. As it runs, it loses 2 cubic centimeters per second of material. I made these numbers up. At what rate does the radius decrease? So you can see a lot of problems like this, but here it's a word problem. It's a calculus word problem. And so when we get a word problem like that, we really want to try to identify things in the, in the things. I, the animation is just extra, and I will show that again at the end. Maybe I'll make a video about how to make the animation. I'm not sure if I haven't decided yet. But here we go. So this right here loses two centimeter cubed per second. What does that mean? Well, we can define that as the rate of change of the volume. And I can write that as a derivative, right? When we talk about rates of change, it's the derivative of the volume with respect to time. It's how does the volume change? Remember, that's what derivatives are. They tell us how things change. Okay, now we have another rate in here. Look at this. At what rate does the radius decrease? So we can write that, at least in our head, as dr dt. We have called the r the radius. It's how fast does the radius change. And that's what we're going to be looking for. So we're given the value for dv dt, and we want to find dr dt. Got it? Okay. So let's start with the, uh, the cylinder and the volume of a cylinder. So if we have a, a cylinder of radius r, and we know that's 20 centimeters, and we know the height, h, and we know that's 10 centimeters, then we can find the volume. It's just the area of the base, which is a circle, pi r squared, times the height, which is h. So there you go. We also know that the derivative of that function is negative 2 cubic centimeters per second. Okay, So we're going to have to take a derivative. We have a function right there, and we're going to take the derivative of that function with respect to time. With respect to time. That's very important. You're going to see that. So let's take the derivative. Here is our function. v is pi r squared h. If I take the derivative with respect to time, I get this. This is what I'm going to do, right? So I'm going to put in this as my function for, for the volume. And really the only thing that changes is this term right here, r squared. So pi is constant, h is constant. I could have moved over to the other side and I wrote that a little weird, but whatever. So when you take the derivative of r squared, what's the derivative of r squared times pi h? It's 2r and then you have pi h, right? 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 This is the mistake that I made as a student. I remember this in my mind. This is a mistake. This is a mistake because that would be the derivative of r squared with respect to r. But we're taking the derivative of r squared with respect to t. So that means we have to use the chain rule and take the derivative of r with respect to t. So we have to multiply that dr dt there too, right? So I take r, bring the two, the use the power rule, bring that down to get 2r. But then I have to take the derivative of r, which is dr dt. Got it? Okay, that, and again, I remember making that mistake so many times in so many different places, and it took me this long to say, hey, that was a mistake. Now, just as a notation, because this is the way we do it in physics, when we take derivatives with respect to time, um, we like to use special notation. So I'm going to use this dot notation. You don't have to do this. It just makes it easier for me to write. So I'm going to say the derivative of r with respect to t is r dot. So we put a dot over it. And it looks really cool, and it makes us feel like we're special. So we're going to do that. And then that would mean also the derivative with respect to time of the volume is v dot. It looks cool, don't you think? So if I put this dv dt along with this, it would look like this. v dot, that's that dv dt, 2 pi h r, and then r dot's that. So that's my thing. And we're looking for r dot, right? That's what the question said. What's r dot? So I want to solve this algebraically for r dot. I can do that. So there you go. So I'm just going to divide both sides by this. I get that. R dot is V dot over 2 pi H R. And that, that's really my answer. I need to plug in my numbers. But you, if you look at this, there's something really important here. Because this is not constant. R dot is not a constant value. Because as the thing loses material, uh, R is going to decrease, which is going to decrease. Uh, increase the rate of r dot. They're not constant. So the problem's a little bit weird. I copied a problem, I modified a problem I actually saw, and it was a bad problem, right? It should have said, what's r dot, what's the rate 
how fast does R lose material or how fast does R decrease at a particular time. So we're going to do at t equals zero. We're going to see what's the initial rate, but it's not constant. And it in fact goes to infinity as R goes to zero. So, but you can still do it. Okay. Now, let's just plug in our values. So here's our expression. Um, we're, we're just going to plug in V dot is negative two cubic centimeters per second. H is 10 centimeters. Uh, oh, that says H. That's R is 20 centimeters. I just, this is a typo. Don't, don't worry about that. Uh, R dot, then I'm just going to put in my values. I'm putting in two pi times H. I put it in right there and negative two. And you will notice something kind of important here, right? I have centimeters, centimeters, and I have centimeters cubed. So these two centimeters are going to cancel with two of those. And I'm just left with centimeters. This, there's nothing that cancels the second, so I get centimeters per second. The, you should check those units. I know it's a calculus class. I know it's math, but the units still matter. Uh, so here's what I get. I plug in my values. I get negative 1.59155 times 10 to the negative 3 centimeters per second at, at t equals 0. I've seen versions of this question that ask about the diameter. What rate does the diameter change? So what if I want to find the diameter? Well, you know, you, you could kind of just use your intuition, but don't. Because intuition gets you in trouble a lot of times. Uh, so we can write an expression for the diameter. It's just twice the radius, right? D is 2R. And I can take the derivative of both sides with respect to time. D, 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 T is 2 times dr dt. So that's pretty easy, right? I already know dr dt, which I'm calling r dot. So I can find d, d dt. It's just going to be twice that value, negative 3.183. And if you think of it in terms of a circle, right, as that circle gets smaller, if it gets smaller by one centimeter on this side and one centimeter on that side because it's, it's equal, then that diameter is decreasing by two centimeters. So that's why it makes sense. You could have done that intuitively, but don't. Okay. Now, it's a really small number, so some people may say, what's the centimeters per hour? So let's convert that uh, r dot in as negative 1.59155 times 10 to the negative third centimeters per second into centimeters per hour. The key to converting units is to multiply by one. I can't, I can't just do whatever I want to this, right? But if I multiply by a, a number one, I don't change the number, right? So this is the number one because 60 seconds is one minute. Those are the same thing. This is 60 over 60. It's the same thing. I just happen to write it in different units. But this is the value one. Now, the nice thing, if I do this, these seconds cancel. So I'm left with this times 60 centimeters per minute. Now I want to do the same thing to cancel the minute. So I'm going to multiply this by 60 minutes per hour. And now the minutes cancel. And what I'm left with, once I multiply this by 60 and 60, I'll get the, the answer in hours. And I get R dot is negative 5.7, blah, 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 centimeters per hour. Got it. Okay. Next, uh, I just want to show you, I, I made a plot of the radius as a function of time, and it looks like this. So you can see here, in fact, if, if you don't say when, it, it fairly constant decrease. The slope of this line is fairly constant. But you can see here as it gets closer and closer to uh, being nothing left, it's going to decrease very fast. So the, the rate of change of R is different over here much later. And I converted this to hours. So you can see it's going to do this. Now, for fun, I thought I'd animate it too. I'm using WebVPython. But here's an animation of the disk as it gets smaller. Uh, and, and I made some assumptions here. We'll talk about that in the next slide. But it's just kind of fun to see uh, how it, and I didn't run it the whole time. But I, you can see that it does decrease. It's just kind of fun. Homework questions. Because when you get a good question like this, it leaves you with more questions. And I actually should have added a fourth question. And I'm going to say the fourth question first. And that is, how long does it take the grindstone, the grind wheel, to completely disappear? Right? You saw it from the graph as like one and a half, but how do you find that and how would you find that? And, and, and if you're not sure, we can talk about that later. I'm not going to do that here. I might make a blog post or another video. I don't know what I'm going to do. So so the first question is, suppose that, that we have this grinding wheel. I wish I had a wheel right by me. And that there's like a scraper on the side that's removing material. Right, That's, that's why it loses material. Um, and if it takes off a constant volume as that 
cylinder gets smaller, then then the the speed of the outside changes, right? If it's rotating at a constant rate. So if if the con if the volume rate is constant, what would you have to do to the angular speed to make that happen? Or what would you not have to do anything? I'm not a hundred percent sure, so I asked the next question. What if the angular speed is constant? What happens to the rate of volume loss? So again, imagine like, you know, the 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 rate loss depends on the height times the velocity of the of the outer surface of the outer rim. Um, what would the volume rate be? And then what would your what would your function be to describe that volume rate? And then for the constant angular velocity, what would the uh, what would be the rate of change of radius? Right, it's a function probably. I don't even know. I haven't done the problem, but these are good problems. Now the fourth problem that I, I didn't think of, what was it? Oh yeah, how long would it take? I already said that one. How long would it take for the whole disk to, to disappear in all these different cases? And I don't even know that these are different, but there you go. Remember one thing. Yes, animations are cool. Python's cool, and I didn't talk about that. But what you should remember is if you take the derivative with respect to time of a variable, you have to take the derivative of that variable with respect to time too. Don't forget that DRDT. Of course, if you don't do that, there's no DRDT to solve for in the problem, so maybe you'd see that anyway. Okay, that's that. Hope you find that useful. Um, the end. <laughs>